Get the latest weather, traffic, and news updates online at 560theanswer.com. Listen to AM560 The Answer online at 560theanswer.com on the AM560 mobile app, on your Alexa-powered smart speaker, and on TuneIn, iHeart, and on Odyssey. Insert Democrat Socialist here. Runs the Democratic House law for 30 plus years running. He's promising this and he's stealing that. Where can you get that kind of money? He's using your house like his own piggy bank, gang, 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 gang. You ought to know by now. You can pay off your house here in Illinois, but you can never keep up with the taxes. Oh, how it's always been the plan To have a taxpayer pay, no doubt Not a matter of if anymore but when You're moving out I said when you Top of the morning, out, Dan and Amy. That theme music means it's time for our weekly conversation with Ted Dabrowski, oh, president okay. of WirePoints, wirepoints.org, all things Illinois policy related. But before we get to him, I've got to say, one of the more entertaining comments I've seen uh, in this mayoral race between P. Hat Paul and BLM Brandon hey, easy. Uh, happened yesterday when BLM Brandon spoke at the City Club. Yeah. City Club, that's like a gathering where you have a family style lunch uh, with your fellow government employees or government contractors. That's that's the assembled audience there. Right. Was it which part? Um, the The part where. He rejected this idea that he wants to defund police, but he, he went further than yeah. just rejecting it. Now it's Don't crazy. tell me that our safety comes down to a doggone hashtag. It's racist and it's ridiculous. It, it's <laughs> it's your hashtag. Right. You started this. You I mean, own he didn't it. Start the whole thing. But I mean, he's it's it's your hashtag. You're you are part of the defund the police movement. They the, the, that movement called itself defund police. And now it's racist. Yeah. All and right. also, too, he wanted to. Okay. Selective enrollment, don't you know? There's no equity. It's not fair, Dan. The people of Chicago want a just and equitable system where no matter where you live in the city of Chicago, you have access to a fully funded neighborhood school. If you were to ask parents, they would say what I'm saying because I am a parent. Uh, yeah, and uh, I'm a parent, too. Um, yeah, Johnson hits people had to walk that back after his city club appearance saying, Johnson, a Johnson administration would not end selective enrollment at CPS. By creating high-quality schools in every neighborhood, we would reduce the pressure on families and the selective enrollment process. Yeah, okay. I mean, that's just uh, that's just sort of uh, obscuring the actual position, which he offered very clearly. Of course, he's, he's, he's a... I mean, he's a Chicago Teachers Union apparatchik. He, he of course, get, he's against school choice. He gets paid $100,000 a year. Doesn't well, have to report into an office anywhere. Nice gig. Yeah, I mean, I guess. I mean, yeah, it's uh, not that nice. But uh, He loves it. Anyway. Uh, all right, for more on the mayor's race and some of these other races, particularly school board, Ted Dabrowski, thanks for joining us. Appreciate it. Good morning, Dan. Good morning, Amy. Um. I mean, I know you're not a Chicago resident, Ted, but um, from a policy perspective, is um, there anything that excites you about this mayor's race, uh, depending on the outcome? No, I, I'm, I'm. To be honest, I'm. I'm. And I'm all, that's why I always try to be honest. Um, I'm not that excited because I don't see. I don't see the real vision of, of turning around Chicago, and that's that's. You know, it's a lot of people's dream is to see the Chicago that's this this awesome city that it should be, and uh, there's nothing in the policy prescriptions out there that 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 try to try to change that. All it does is either kind of hold the line. You know, let's get back to the 2019 Chicago we had, which was you know already in deep trouble, or or on a path which is you know much more much more dangerous, and uh, that's you know that's one where you know we have more crime, uh, our schools get worse. And uh, and people keep fleeing, and that's you know e either way, I think that keeps happening. So you've got to have this this massive change at some point. And and as we've talked about, we're not ready for it yet. People aren't ready for it. They're not demanding it yet. Um, school board races. If you were uh, providing advice and counsel to incoming school board members, let's say some of these reform-minded school board members win, and um, whether they're they they go into uh, 
well, for the most part, it, they're going to be going into boards where they're not in the majority. Uh, forget the RD. They're just not in the majority in terms of mindset and, and mission. And so w w what would you advise school board members, incoming school board members, to be focused upon, to think about, to watch out for? Well, you know, I, I think there's, there's a lot just in the data, and, and the data tells a lot. And, and you know, the, the other side doesn't care about the data. They're, they're going to diminish the data. They're going to try to hide the data. But the more that it can come out, I mean, you know, I was looking like this, you know, places like Oswego and, 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 well, even Springfield. I posted just a few minutes ago what's happening in Springfield. You know, the, the numbers are, are, are horrific, and, and it's hard for them to hide from. I'm going to give a story because I went down to Springfield last week. And I testified in front of the Education Appropriations Committee, sure and I and I threw these numbers out there. Well, you know, yeah. I can yeah, tell you what. Cool. Yeah, yeah they they don't give a damn. I mean, they don't give a damn about these numbers. And I shouldn't say they because some of them do. That's that's how I got invited. There's a few a few people who do care, um, and uh, and uh, you know Blaine Willauer is one of them. Uh, but, but there's a whole bunch of people that don't care, and it's, it's the the soft bigotry of low expectations is in full force in that committee. You know, they, it's funny, I, I talked about third grade numbers and how critical it is for, for third graders to be able to read before they move on. And um, Mara Hershauer, who's a state rep, you know, asked me how much time I spent in third grade classrooms and did I really know what I was talking you know, effectively asking if I knew what I was talking about. Um, but, you know, I brought back places like Decatur and, and Mount Vernon, all these places where most kids can't read. And then you look at a place like Springfield, their numbers are hor horrific as well. You know, you're talking about two out of ten, three out of ten kids being able to read, and the, the others can't. So um, I, I think in, in these teacher evaluations, 100 percent, I think there's a lot of just pure, straight data to raise a lot of questions and put the other guys on the defensive. Uh, it's it's not a, it's, it doesn't mean you're going to win, but you're going to win a lot of uh, uh, you know ears with with let's call them center left con con uh, concerned parents who maybe aren't on our side to start saying what what are these numbers? These are these are crazy numbers. What are, are they true? Are they correct? And uh, slowly start to win over people because that's what we need to do is win them over. Maura Hershauer, she represents like West Chicago, South Elgin, Bartlett. Um, how many third grade classrooms has she been in? Um, and, you know, visiting a classroom to say, hi, I'm your state representative doesn't give you exactly a handle on what's happening in terms of kids reading and math aptitude, which is what you're talking about. And the, the uh, school districts in her legislative district are terrible i mean with a capital t so it's just it's but it so it speaks to your point about sort of their indifference and dismissive attitude i i agree with you i think that 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 the idea that at, at minimum as a school board member you need to at, at, you can relentlessly every single meeting demand information and make that information which should all be public uh you know minus personnel record stuff most of that should be public and you make it public and you pour over it and you you demand explanations of why we our school district is, you know, under 50 percent in terms of reading and math at grade level, which is most every school district in Chicagoland. Yeah, like, you know, Springfield, you know, just two, two of every 10 kids can read a grade level and just well, whatever, 15 out of 100, 15 percent. And yet, you know, the uh, spending per student is up 50 percent in the last decade. Uh, student enrollment is that down 22%. I mean, these stories are, are playing out everywhere, and I think it makes it really hard for for you know these these school districts to think they're performing well to to defend themselves. You know, what's fascinating? There's a guy on our side who um, who called me after these report cards came out, and uh, he's at one of these really you know what, 214. So that's uh, what is it, the Arlington Heights and yeah, all that. Percy, yeah, right. And he called me. Feeling. Yeah, and he called me and he said, Percy. "Hey, your report card is wrong. It says 42%." are reading a grade level. He says, that can't be right. My, my, you know, my kid went there. Uh, he, he did great. It's a great school. 42%. It's got to be wrong. Well, I you know, pulled up the report card, and there it was. Um, uh, so you know, even he was shocked. Now, I, I got a letter from a lady who actually took the report card and went and spoke to her board. And I loved, I loved, she showed me the letter she sent. And she basically, after she read out the stats, she said she wanted in writing from the board these three, you know, she had three questions. She said, I want an answer in writing on these things. And I had to do around the proficiency levels and all that. And I thought that was fantastic because she, she asked them to do something. Now, let's see if they actually answer. Because, you know, they don't answer when you're standing there, right? You have to, but let's see if they answer in written form. And I like that because she, she's putting pressure on them to respond to these things. And so um, 
I hope to, to put out her letter if she lets me, and uh, and I want to see what responses the board give because they should give one. Um, I, I saw you were recently on Univision to talk about uh, these same uh, yeah. measures with respect to Latino students specifically. So what, what's, what kind of reaction is that So span, from Spanish media? Number one, they're amplifying it, which is that's good. Um, but I just wanted to, like, what's the number, 18%? Uh, 20% yeah. reading and math proficiency statewide? Yeah, and, you know, and 17% for, for, or what is it, 18% for reading in, in Chicago. Um, I don't know yet. Uh, we're we're going we're gonna, to, like, check it out. What, what was fascinating to me is when we put out a press release that we did the report card, you know, we didn't hear from Chicago Tribune or, you know, <laughs> yeah. any of those about, about the low scores. But what was really cool is that, that uh, Enrique Rodriguez from uh, Univision reached out and said, hey, I want to, I want to look at your thing. And if you watch the thing, of course, it's in Spanish. Uh, what's great is that he unpacks the whole report. Before I ever come on, he unpacks the report card you know, and talks about you know, the, the teacher. He kind of laughs about it. He says, look at these teacher evaluations compared to the reading results. Look at these uh, um, graduation rates. And he points it all out. And, uh, and then, of course, he gave me a couple minutes to talk about it. Um, and, and I love that. You know, I, I don't know where the politics are over Univision. And, uh, you know, they're, they're – uh, but uh, – you know, they were willing to point this out where, where the rest of the media is not. You know, the rest of the media is actually taking the opposite stance. But uh, I was really happy that the Latinos, you know, the Latinos like school choice. Um, you know, they like Catholic schools by nature. Um, they're, they're not happy with a lot of what happens with um, a lot of the, uh, the, the social issues we've been talking about on the transgender and the sex ed and the CRT. They don't like, they don't like that stuff. They want, you know, you know, it's hard, but they want a good quality education and they want good values for their kids. So, um, I think it's promising. We're going, to, we're going to try to make big inroads into trying to reach the, the Hispanics because they should know exactly what's going on in their schools and how the schools are failing. So, well, who's going to get the Latino vote, Vallis or Johnson? Oh man, you know that's another good question. I, it, it's, that's uh, going to be a toss. Be, it's, it's, Vallis is going to get the Latino vote, but I mean that's that's not going to be determinative. I mean it just it's just not a big enough cohort. But, yeah, the problem not, is it's not a big yeah, percentage they don't, they don't of the undecideds something. either. It's not a big percentage of the undecideds. Yeah, and they don't come out and vote enough. And, they, you know, they, 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 of course, have the, the fastest growing demographic and, you know, they're, they're bigger right. now than the blacks in, in the city. But uh, until they actually start coming out and voting in, in full, and, until they realize their, their political power, then it doesn't matter yet as much. Yeah, and, and until they stop electing socialist aldermen in some of the Latino wards, um, they're not going to realize the strength of their numbers either. I mean, good grief. It's just when we do these things by race, I mean, every single race is a mess in Chicago, white, black, Latino. It's a mess. We, we divide it that way because we're a racially polarized city. But I mean, the, the way we talk about this stuff is just so ignorant. I just it just it just drives me loony. And that's a short trip. Um, I wanted to get to something else. Uh, your colleague wrote Mark Glennon. Um, because we were talk we've been talking so much about school board races, and, and thanks to your good work, we have some data that's hopefully waking some people up about the importance of figuring out what the heck is going on at their local school district, particularly in the suburbs. And um, when people start, you know, continue to get flyers in the mail and stuff or caucus endorse, um, really good piece about the local caucuses. This sort of anachronism that some communities still use to slate candidates and whoa the the village elders have come together and they've slated these candidates so stick with the caucus and it's in places like hinsdale and lake forest and the north shore to talk to us about uh, the caucus uh pro that that caucus construct and whether or not a voter sh should take the recommendations of their local caucus where they exist yeah, if you, if you have no idea, you know, your, your caucus, you know, like, I'll talk about the Dutrier caucus, right, in, in where, where I live. Uh, you know, these are all your good people from your neighborhood. You've seen them in the neighborhood. They're all professionals and all that. Uh, but when you dig deep, man, I, I tell you, this is a, a longstanding power. It, it's a club. Uh, it's really hard to get into the caucus. You know, it's the caucus that chooses the, the quote, approved slate uh, from the caucus. And, you know, once once they choose somebody for that for that that slate it's almost like a guaranteed way to, to win because if you're not in that slate oh my god you weren't you weren't picked by the caucus uh but when you again when you peel back the onion you start to see that the caucus really supports the status quo of what's going on um you know they will they will they will take on anybody who challenges anything whether it's the sex ed whether it's the 
you know, the, the whole COVID mitigations or, or hell, if you want to talk about academic excellence, you're probably, uh, you're, you're, you're deemed, I hate to say, but you're deemed a redneck, you know, sorry, you can't be in the club. And so these caucuses have amassed this power. They have this aura of, of, uh, of, uh, you know, uh, authority. they're, they're the elders, yeah, like, like the, you said, yeah. authority. Yeah. And it's just, it's just not true. It's false. And, you know, they're blocking, they're blocking the reforms. And, you know, what's crazy about that is Nutrier, you know, speaking of report cards, Nutrier had 88% reading proficiency in 2017, right? So this is before COVID, 88% reading proficiency for the whole district. And it's dropped to 70%. So it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's a pretty big drop. Um, and, 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 you know, that should have a lot of people worried because, you know, Nutrier is about, well, it was about academic excellence. Now it's, you know, now we talk about all kinds of other things except for academic excellence. Mm-hmm. So, uh, you know, these slates are, these slates are very, very powerful, uh, and, and, but, but dangerous because they don't let other voices come in. And, and people, 70% reading proficiency, reading at grade level at Nutrier, people, listening to this that don't, you know, that probably not listening to, because our audience is informed, but people that didn't know anything about the things that we talk about say, well, what do you think the reading proficiency, who, how many, what percentage of new chair students do you think read at grade level? You invariably people would say hundred percent, 95%, 99%, yeah. right? <laughs> they have no idea. And by the way, um, 70% is like, oh, well, if they're at 70 and we're only at 55, then that's not so bad. We're pretty close to new chair. Wait, um, let's remember the point. The point is 100%. The point is that no one be, should be graduating from high school or grade school uh, if they're not proficient in reading and math at grade level. That's the point, isn't it? Yeah, I mean, I mean think about it. 30% of kids at new chair can't read at grade level. I mean, that's that's phenomenal. And now then, then there's the big news about all the – uh, what do you, what do they call it? Truancy, right? All this, all these, maybe it's not the word truancy for, for Nutria, but uh, this absenteeism, it's, it's gone crazy where kids aren't showing up for school anymore. Um, so if they're not showing up for school because, well, you know, you got to, you know, whatever, I, I don't know. I don't know what to call it. And then they can't read, you know, something has to change. And, and, uh, and, and instead we're going into that, into that crazy path that, uh, you know, academic excellence becomes a bad word. He is Ted Dabrowski, president of WirePoints, wirepoints.org, all things policy-related. Thanks, Ted. Thank you, guys. Thank you, and he joined us on our turnkey.pro answer line. It's like a hot, steaming cup of information to start your day. It's Chicago's Morning Answer on AM 560, The Answer. Hi, I'm Ken Mariotti, owner of Woodland Windows and Doors in Roselle. It's been a long, cold winter, but finally, spring is in the air, a time to brighten things up around the house. Make the rooms in your house that appear